Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for July 10th, 2024. I'm excited about this message. I'm teaching a series this year entitled How to Live Your Life with a Laser Focus on God's Fixed Purpose. That means that God has a purpose for me and God has a purpose for you. This purpose is fixed. It was established actually before the world began. And his purpose for our lives for this season will be revealed to us at just the right time so that we would have enough light in order to see what we need to see in order to maximize the current season that we're in. God is not going to tell us everything. He may not tell you what's down the street or around the corner, but he will give you enough light for one more step. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're studying the life of David. We spent three months studying the life of Joseph. We're just getting into the life of David. And I'm talking about this level of mystery. There's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. If you're going to walk with God, you got to know that God is not going to tell you everything because if he told you everything, you wouldn't need faith. So there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. Put that in the chat. And, and you got to be okay with that certain level of mystery. That being the case, the title of today's message is God's Mysterious Plan. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And as he reveals and unfolds that plan, sometimes it seems mysterious. Sometimes God is taking us down the road that we're like, I don't even know where I'm going. I don't even know what's, what's happening, but this is amazing. And then over the fullness of time, you get to look back and you're like, Woo, Lord, I thank you that your plans were better than my plans. Put in the chat, God's plans are better than my plans. God's mysterious plan. Let's get ready for the word. Oh, this is going to be good. All right, so we're getting into the word for this morning. Listen, one of the things that I've learned is that, you know, we don't know everything. We just know what God allows us to know. <laughs> God reveals to us certain things and he will give us enough light to be able to take one more step. And so that we would know what we're doing now. But a lot of times we have a concept or an idea of what we think, what we believe God is leading us into, but we don't have the fullness of it. Unless God reveals the fullness, we won't know. And so we're dealing with this level of mystery that is connected to our purpose. And as we're walking with God, it's almost like I'm along for the ride. Like this is an amazing journey. Put in the chat, this is an amazing journey. Proverbs chapter four, verse 25. Now, the little bit that God has allowed you to see, you need to focus on that. It says, set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. So God, I don't know everything. God hasn't revealed everything to me, but but what he has revealed to me about my future, I'm going to be locked in and focused on that. And I'm going to do today whatever God leads me to do today, knowing that he has my tomorrow in his hands. Put in the chat, my God has been to my tomorrow. James chapter one, verses two through four says, my fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, you should see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Why? For you know that when your faith is tested and your faith will be tested, it actually develops inside of you the power to endure all things. And then as you have this power to endure all things, as that grows, it releases perfection or maturity into every part of your being until the text says there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. So when you, the King James says perfect and entire wanting nothing. You want to get to the point where there's nothing missing and nothing lacking, that you are a mature believer. How do you do that? Well, I endure these seasons of testings. I allow my faith to be tested to the point where I pass the test, where I am living my life and my internal state is not contingent upon external circumstances. And it, it, even when it seems as though I'm facing nothing but difficulties, I still have joy. That's how I can mature in Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter three and verse one says, there's a right time for everything and everything on earth is gonna happen at just the right time. So now we're looking at the life of David. Uh, we spent uh, over a week dealing with the selection of David, which was 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And then for the last couple of days, we've been looking at verses 14 through 23. So this particular passage, 14 through 23, 
is the setup for today's message. Yesterday, we saw how David, after he was anointed to be the next king of Israel, tried to go back to his normal life, right? The prophet left. His father and brothers went back to their lives. He went back out into the fields. And we also saw how soon after that, David was summoned to go see the king and to serve as the king's personal musician. Now, we didn't know. I mean, like the Bible doesn't tell us that David knew how to play a harp, but all of a sudden, while David was minding his own business, somebody in the palace said, hey, we need somebody to play the harp so you could calm down, Mr. King, whenever this troubling spirit comes. And over in Bethlehem, there's a man named Jesse. Jesse has a son named David. David, he's a, he's a strong man. He's a man of war. He's accomplished. He's good looking. And the spirit of the Lord is upon him. And he knows how to play the harp. He was like, all right, well, we'll bring him here. And so he goes, they go and they get David and David goes and he stands before the king. And all of a sudden they give him a job. He, he becomes the king's armor bearer and also the king's personal musician. And so they, the king sends word to Jesse that like, hey, I, I like your son. Uh, your son is cool. If it's okay with you, I want your son to stay here. And of course, what do you think Jesse's going to say to the king? right? He's not going to say nothing to the king. So he's like, uh, okay. And so just like that, David was minding his own business one day when his brother came and got him out of the fields. And the prophet says, you are anointed to be the next king of Israel. And then all of a sudden he goes back to his normal life and somebody else comes to get him and says, Hey, what's this? Hey, the king wants to see you. And he goes now, first he got called by a prophet. Now he's getting called by a king. The first time he had an impromptu coronation ceremony where he was anointed to be the next king of Israel. And even though he was anointed to be the next king of Israel, he submitted himself and went to go see the king that he knew he was supposed to replace. And the king says, I want you to serve me as my armor bearer and my personal musician. And David said, yes, sir, I'll do whatever. I'm down for whatever. I don't know what's going on. David is like, can you imagine? David was just like, minding his own business, just tending sheep. And all of a sudden, this weird dude shows up in his house and anoints him, puts oil on his head, and now says, I'm anointed to be the king of Israel, and the spirit of the Lord comes upon me from that day. And then he tries to go back to his normal life again, and bam, he's standing before the king. And the king says, you're my personal armor bearer. The king says, you're my personal musician. And every time the, this troubling spirit came upon the king, David would play the harp, and then the king would calm down, and, and the king was like, well, you ain't going nowhere. You need, you need to stay here, Right? So this is a mysterious plan. God's mysterious plan. Do you have, let's say you were David for a minute. Think about you as David. You just been out here with, in the fields, like with these sheep. And it, over the span of a few weeks, your life has changed forever, right? You were anointed right in front of your father and your brothers. You, the spirit of the Lord has come upon you. And now you're working in the palace. How, this is crazy, but it was God's plan. And just like God has a plan, had a plan for David, God has a plan for you and for me. So what does this mean for you today? All of that was a setup. I have five things to share with you this morning, and let's get into these five things. This is where I need you to really rid your heart and mind of all distractions. Five things. Number one, here we go. There is a certain level of mystery associated to walking with God. I already shared that with you, but now let me further elaborate the point. If you're anything like me, I know that there's some people that are watching right now. I know some of you that are watching uh, right now that are in the chat. I know some of you personally. Uh, and I know, and some of you I don't know personally, but those of you that I know personally, I know that some of you are planners like me. I'm thinking of some names that are in the chat right now that are planners, right? And if you're a planner like me, like Isabella too, then you like to, like, you like to project out your plans, you know, for weeks and months and years. Like some people have like, you know, short-term plans, mid-term plans, long-term plans. So if you're a planner like me, then you like to know what's going on and you like to have everything organized and you like to have everything projected out. And then you like to knock things out and you like to see as your plan comes to pass. But let me tell you something. Walking with God is not like that. You could try that. Like, I mean, that's fine. Just as long as your plans line up with God's plans, fine. But if they don't, just know that along the way, God will mess up your plans. Along the way, like David had zero, zero plans, zero ideas, not even an inkling that he was going to be the king of Israel, right? Not even an inkling that he was going to stand before King Saul. He didn't even know King Saul. Like how in the world? David didn't know 
what was going on. But you know what David did? David rolled with the punches. Put in the chat. Sometimes I just got to roll with the punches. Sometimes I just got to flow with it. Listen, I don't know sometimes what God is doing. I, I'm like, uh, God is doing stuff. And I'm like, I think I, I think I kind of know what he's doing. But but what, his ways are above my ways and his thoughts are above my thoughts and his plans are better than mine. So uh, what does this mean for you and I? How does this apply to us? God reveals his plans to us. God's vision is incremental and progressive. I've told you this point before, but let me explain. God's vision, put in the chat, God's vision is incremental and progressive. It's incremental and progressive. It means that God, God's vision, God will release light, vision, and increments. God won't tell you everything because if God told you everything, you wouldn't need faith. So God reveals his vision in increments, in snippets. He will give you enough light to be able to see what you need to do next but he's not going to tell you everything. He won't tell you maybe what's down the street or around the corner. You may have an idea, but his plans are better than your plans. And so when it finally happens, it's going to be better than you imagine. And so, so God gives you these things in increments. So his vision is incremental and his, his vision is also progressive, meaning that as you're walking with God, then the more you mature, the more character you develop, the more God can trust you with. So, so God can give you progressively bigger increments. Like there's some things that God can tell me now that he couldn't tell me 20 years ago. He couldn't tell me 10 years ago because 10 years ago, I couldn't handle it. And so God will only re reveal to you what you're capable of handling. And so God will reveal it to you in increments and it's also progressive. So as you're progressively walking with God and developing character, God says, you can handle more daughter. So I'm gonna tell you more. You can handle, okay, let's just be natural for a minute. In this house right now, upstairs, I have an 11-year-old son and an 18-year-old son. And we also have um, a 28-year-old daughter and a 31-year-old son. Um, there's some things that I could tell the 18-year-old that I can't tell the 11-year-old. There's some things that I could tell the 28-year-old the that I'm not going to tell the 18-year-old. And right, so, so when somebody is more mature, then they can handle more. And that's how it is with God. So God is like, okay, do you think that David knew? Heck no, David didn't know anything about what was going on. I mean, so, but this is a, there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. So you have to embrace the unknown. Put in the chat, I embrace the unknown. You got to trust that the revelation that is coming from God, whatever little bit or big or whatever God gave you, it's enough. God's revelation is enough because God's grace is sufficient. So the little bit of light that he gave you is enough for you to maximize the season that you're in. And then after you maximize that season, God will make sure that you have enough light to maximize the next. And so what you have to do is trust that God's grace is sufficient and that God's knowledge is better than your knowledge and that God's plans are better than your plans. So when you live this way, you should, this is why I'm excited every day because you live your life with a level of expectancy, that, that there's a level of, of revelation, that there, there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God and God's plan for me is perfect. So I embrace the journey. I walk down the path. I know that God is on me and in me and with me and for me and I find joy in the process, not just the outcome. Put in the chat, I find joy in the process, not just the outcome. If all of these people are just waiting for the outcome, but God is saying, you better find joy in the process not just the outcome. You need to enjoy the journey. Say amen to that. Glory to God. Number two, when God opens a door, walk through it with trust and confidence. When God opens a door and you don't know what's on the other side of that door, but God is saying, go, just walk through it. Trust in God with confidence in God. David had to trust God. He, when, when he was out there tending his father's sheep, uh, uh, I told you before that he killed a lion and a bear with his bare hands. He had hand-to-paw combat twice. Hand-to-paw combat with a lion, hand-to-paw combat with a bear, and he killed the lion and he killed the bear with his bare hands. And what did he learn out there in the fields? He was learning, I trust God. I don't know what's going on, but what I know is this, I trust God. I know that God is on me and in me and with me and for me. And so in this moment, where we are in the story, God is leading David in a different direction. No longer are you going to be a shepherd of sheep. No longer, I'm taking you in a different direction. I've anointed you to be the king. I'm going to expose you to the palace. I'm going to go put you in front of the king that's right now. I'm going to go make you serve the man that you're going to replace. And I'm going to put you in this environment. God was leading him in a new way. And David had to trust God. He had to trust that there was, this was a new plan. This was a new way. This was a new experience. 
and he had to trust God the whole way. And what is true for David is true for me, is true for you. When, when God opens the door, know this, put in the chat, God is not leading me to failure. No, I don't know what God is. I mean, this is crazy what God is leading me to do right now. But what I know is that I'm not going to fail. God is not leading me to failure. God is leading me to experience his best. So how does this section apply to you? Number two, this, this second point. Well, you got to recognize that when God opens the door, it's an invitation to a greater purpose. So you step out in faith without a doubt, without wavering, believing that God's grace is sufficient. It's a new, every new challenge, every new opportunity is, is an opportunity for you to experience God on a greater level. You can look back at your past victories and, and use that as a foundation for your future successes, but don't let your past victories hold you back. So you got to move forward. It's forward ever, back whenever the best is yet to come. You got to embrace new opportunities. You got to keep your heart open to what God is doing next. You got to believe that God is that God's plans are good and that God's timing is perfect. And so you may not know what's going on. You may not understand what's on the other side of the door, but if God opened the door, then you walk through it and you walk through it with trust and your confidence in God. You got to know that like a sheep, the Bible likens us to sheep and likens God likens himself to a shepherd and sheep have a terrible sense of direction. But here's the thing about sheep. It doesn't matter. They don't need to know where they're going just as long as they know who they're following. They are following their shepherd. And just so when we are following our great shepherd, we may not know. I may not know where I'm going, but I know this. I know who I'm following and I know that God has already been to my future and his plans for me are good and God is not going to hurt me. So I trust God and I have confidence in God. Say amen to that. All right. Number three, human obedience aligns us to experience God's blessing. Obedience opens the door to the blessing. David's willingness to serve Saul. Let me talk about this one for a minute. This is a strong point. David's willingness to serve the king that he knew he was anointed to replace demonstrates how when we are obedient to God and humble, how we position ourselves to experience God's best. When we submit to God's current assignment, regardless of how we feel about that particular assignment, we are aligning ourselves with God's ultimate plan and, and letting him do the divine orchestration that only he can do. So how does this apply to you? My point is you don't have to make it happen. God is going to make it happen. It takes humility to serve another man's assignment and another man's vision when you know that you are called and you're anointed for your own. And listen, I, I, I know what it's like to serve the vision of another man. I've done this for decades, not for years, for decades. I know what it's like to serve the vision of another man. And it takes a certain level of humility and honor and grace to serve the vision of another man, knowing that you are called and anointed for your own, but you're ser he went and served the king that he knew he was anointed to re replace. And recognize that every assignment from God, big or small, is significant. So God is always working in your life. Understand that your current position is actually preparing you for your next one. So what you want to do is be faithful over what you're doing now and remain humble. Trust that, listen, God is developing your character even in times and seasons where you're like, man, this is difficult because I would rather be the man myself. But no, no, you are serving the, and what you make happen for them, God is going to make happen for you. When you serve the vision of another man, you are sowing into your future. Put in the chat, I I am sowing into my future. I'm being faithful over little. And one day God is going to place me charge over much. So my obedience today unlocks the blessing of my tomorrow. So I need to, and here's another thing. Obedience precedes understanding because there's a certain level of mystery to walking with God. God is going to want you to be obedient now and he will explain it later. And so obedience, put that in the chat. Obedience precedes understanding. It makes me think about in, in, um, July of 2015, Isabella and I were in the Dominican Republic and we were there on vacation. Long story short, the Lord moved upon my heart and told me to buy an apartment in the Dominican Republic. And I was like, buy, an apartment, buy a condo for what? I was like, we don't have nothing to do here. And the Lord was like, buy it. And, and, and I was like, okay, I mean, I, I got to be obedient. This doesn't make any sense to me at all. And so we did, like we put the down payment down in July of 2015. And then the Lord connected us to the pastor and the students that would eventually become our church and our school in the Dominican Republic in October of 2015. 
And when, when that happened in October, the Lord was like, that's why you need the apartment. I was like, duh, right? And so, so that's how it is with God. God, your obedience positions you for a greater level of revelation. God is not going to tell you everything now because if he told you everything, you wouldn't need faith. So you got to do it now. God, you got to obey when God tells you to obey, even though you may not understand what's going on and you will understand it better. The songwriter said, by and by, you, you'll be able to look back and say, oh, I got it now. Hindsight is 2020. I got it, but you have to be obedient now. Say amen to that. Number four, God's favor can quickly change your circumstances. David's life changed drastically over the course of just a few weeks. He was just minding his own business, tending sheep, and he got, boom, anointed. Then he was tending sheep, boom, that he got, now he's standing before the king, and now he's the king's armor bearer. Now he's the king's personal musician. Listen, God can change your life just like that. Stay ready for these sudden promotions. They're put in the chat, suddenly. While I've been teaching you about faith and patience and your need for faith and patience and add patience to your faith, I got it because you got to hold on long enough. And when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, I got it. All of that stuff, patience, patience, patience. I've been teaching you about that. But I also want to thank God for the suddenlies. I also, yeah, there are moments where, yeah, I got to wait for weeks and months and years and decades, but there are sometimes these suddenly blessings. Put in the chat, I want a suddenly blessing from time to time. So I just want, sometimes God would just give you, boom, a suddenly. And suddenly the door was open. And suddenly th this happened and it came to pass. I just, like, you know, so thank God for those sudden moments. Thank God for those suddenly blessings. There are times where we have to wait and we have to be patient and we have to hold on and we have to endure and we have to overcome. But then there are all the moments where God just boom and suddenly it came to pass. That's what God did. I mean, like that's what God did for David and that's what God would do for us. Say amen to that. Number five, last point for today. I'm going to let you go with this point. God's ways are higher than our ways. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse nine says, even as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. This is evident in David's life and Joseph's life and our lives. David was a shepherd boy. And all of a sudden, he's the personal musician to the king. David was a shepherd boy. And now he's the king's armor bearer. David was a shepherd boy. And now he's anointed to be the next king of Israel. That defies human logic. That defies human expectations. Nobody would have ever expected. If you said, if somebody were to just say, let's barbershop conversation. Hey, excuse me. Whew. Barbershop conversation. They're talking about King Saul. And somebody says, who do you think is going to replace King Saul? Well, most people in the barbershop are going to say, well, his son, the prince, Jonathan, right? So, obviously. Or if somebody said, well, maybe not him. What if somebody else replaced him? I'm sure they would probably start naming generals, general this or general that. But nobody would say, hey, down in Bethlehem, there's a guy named Jesse. Jesse has eight sons and the little son is out there tending sheep. That's the guy that God is going to, I mean, that's the next king of Israel. Nobody would have said that, not in a thousand years. But God's ways are above our ways. And God's thoughts are above our thoughts. And so we got to trust God even when it doesn't make sense. So you got to accept that God's plan may not make sense from your perspective. But you got to trust that God knows what he's doing. Put in the chat, God knows what he's doing. Trust that God's wisdom is better than our plans. And let's be clear about something. God's wisdom is often counterintuitive to human understanding. God will tell you to do stuff that just doesn't make sense. But you got to remember, but if it's God's will and God is telling you to do it, then you have to do it. I remember when I was buying the apartment in the Dominican Republic, my family sat me down and they said, hey, we love you. Um, and we're only telling you this because we love you. We think you're making a mistake. <laughs> you haven't been to the DR in a long time. You just retired from the army. You just spent a month in the DR. You must be overly emotional. Now you want to buy this apartment, and plus it's way too much money, and all of this stuff is not a good idea. And I said, okay. And everything they said made sense. Everything they said was human logic, human reasoning, common sense. But I still had to do it because God said do it. 
And so I did it. And now, long story short, it was one of the best decisions we made. Now, my whole, I got a bunch of people from my family living in that same neighborhood now, all because I was obedient to God. And I did what God told me to do, even when it didn't make sense. So you got to trust that God knows what he's doing. You got to trust that God's plan is perfect and his timing is perfect. And God will unfold things at just the right time. That's what he did with David. That's what he did with Joseph. And that's what he will do with us. So there's a certain level of mystery and adventure to walking with God to this mysterious plan. And so the grace life is exciting. Walking and living by faith is exciting. Put in the chat. I love this life, and it is exciting. That's enough for today. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I hope you've learned a lot uh, in this message, and you're learning a lot in this series. Let's close it out. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I embrace the level of mystery that is involved in me walking with you, knowing that you will reveal what I need to know when I need to know it. So I step through every door that you open for me with trust and confidence. I stand in awe of your favor, knowing that you can change my life suddenly. I remain faithful over the small things, and you will give me greater responsibilities. I believe that your favor can override human limitations and human understanding. So I live my life with a level of expectation. You reveal to me what I need to know when I need to know it. And my faith is just anchored in your love. I am sure that greater is coming for me because you love me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, please go to todaysword.org. Click on the big red subscribe button. If you're not getting my notes, you get my notes for free. Todaysword.org, big red subscribe button on the top right. Click on it, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. I hope you enjoyed this message. I know I did. Do me a favor, three things. Leave me some comments in the chat. If this message was a blessing to you, number two, share this message on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. And number three, Listen to this outro video. There's some content in here that is pertinent to you. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If our ministry is a blessing to you, please consider becoming a partner with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Not only will you support the word of God going out on a daily basis, but you will also support our school in the Dominican Republic, where we are providing 200 Haitian children a Christ-based education free of charge and also a hot meal every day. If you want to become a partner with us, go to ripministries.org and you'll be able to do so there. If you don't have any of my materials, well, let me just show you a few things. Well, this is my first book, Level Up Your Life, where I cover how to level up your life in five areas of your life. Here's Grace-Based Success. It's a daily devotional where in 28 days, you'll be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's two affirmations books, one for men and one for women. These books will help you to align your faith, your heart, and your lips with the word of God. Or just go to rickpina.co. You'll see all the books there, apparel. Please make yourself available to those materials. They will be a blessing to you. Lastly, Isabella and I have been committed to coaching and mentorship for many, many years. And the Lord led me to use a platform where I could do it online, where we can leverage ourselves and scale. So now we have over 600 videos and continuing to grow. We're recording videos on a weekly basis where we're covering how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and how to be successful as a Christian and in business and with relationships and etc. So if you're interested in that, please go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. You will be blessed. Thank you for being a blessing to us, and we pray that we will continue to be a blessing to you.